when you have money, it gives you choices. You can make choices. You got options. That's why God wants you to mend us the rich. Because we are his children. So we say, your God shall supply all your need. All, not some, but all your need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And we say, God is rich. All the silver in this world, all the gold in this world belongs to our God. He said, cause is any man who puts his trust in the arm of flesh. And we said, no matter who that person is, let, don't let your trust be in man to supply your need. He's dangerous. If you are a woman of God, you can trust God to make you a multi-millionaire as a woman. Your trust is in your husband to provide for you. You are wrong. Your trust is in God. God is your source, not your husband or your wife. The world is working mightily in me. The world is working mightily in me. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, the world is working mightily. Again, again. The world is mightily in me. Sing this song. Oh, the world is working mightily. Sing with me. The world I want, the circumstances, what I see, not see. The world is walking mightily. It's a Sunday school song, but it's very powerful. It's a powerful song. The world is walking mightily in us. The world is. We live here chapter 4, verse 19. My God. One, two, go. Let's say it together. And my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Once again, my God shall supply all my men according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Not according to your salary. No, 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 a thousand times no. Not according to your salary. If you think your salary, you mean your name, you are kidding. Not according to your business. My God shall supply all my need, not according to my business. No, 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 a thousand times no, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And last Sunday we began an exciting series on God of Increase. I wanted to do one series and go away, but somehow I, I, I felt compelled. But I, I was actually, I mean, I, I sense God wants us to continue this series. Okay, to build on what we did on Sunday. We don't need money here, except for those who are small kids. Even a child, at a tender age, will give food money inside the child's hand, will we'll grab it. Doesn't know money, cannot spend money. But there's something about money. There's a spirit behind money. Okay? It's very, very powerful. Look at the ordinary paper. There's a paper, ordinary paper, but there's a, spirit, there's, a, there's a spirit behind money. That's why we need to learn how to get it in church. We have to learn it, how to get it here. God wants his children rich. I don't know. I don't think you, I don't, I don't think you believe what I said. I say God wants you rich. Amen. I say God wants you rich. Amen. Some of you, you need, we need to say it a thousand times before you can, before you can catch it. Because you have been used to poverty so much that you need to begin to stay yourself. Look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm rich. Tell yourself now, I'm rich. I'm, rich. I'm very, very rich. I'm very, very rich. Praise God. You have to say it a thousand times for you, to, for you to click. Now, we began last Sunday. We said, look, we said, God is your only source. God should be your only source. God ought to be a, our only source. God shouldn't be one of the sources. Okay? No, 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 no. God should be our only source. And we discussed about different channels. You know, if you're here on Tuesday, we shared about different channels of getting money. Uh, different channels, you know, get, you can get money. God can provide money through your employer. God can, give, God can use your employer to be a blessing to you as a channel. God can use your, your business to be a channel of blessing to you. God can use your spouse, your, uh, your, your children, your parents can be a channel. Anybody can be used by God to be a channel to you. Okay? If God used ravens, do you know ravens in the Bible? 
uh, ravens in the Bible. Elijah, was, there, if there was a time when there was so much famine in the land, there was no food anywhere, no water anywhere, and God used ravens as a channel. He used bears flying. Ravens is one of the most stingy birds. Ravens, when they give birth, when they lay their eggs, you know what ravens do? When they want to give birth, they lay their eggs in other people's nest. They go to any bed that is already lay egg, and they go there and lay their eggs with it, and then they fly away. The bed will be able to hatch it and not the children. They are so stingy, they can't waste time on laying eggs. And hatching the egg, they can only lay the egg, they cannot hatch the egg. So, look, bed, I lay it for you. You take care of it. They fly away. And God decided to choose ravens to bring food to Elijah. I'm talking about your God now. My God has supplied. Your God. Your God. Your God used ravens, the most stingy best, to bring food to Elijah in the time of famine. When there was no hope, every, everybody was dry, things were difficult, God used the ravens to bring, to bring food for Elijah. And that ravens was a channel. Then at one time that channel stopped. The channel dried up. Sometimes you have a job, the job dries up, or you have some business here, it dries up here, and you think that that's unfinished. There are many of us that believe that, that what we do right now, once anything stops it, maybe something happens in your office, or something happens that you see, somebody looks at you, looks at you and sack you. Many, many of us believe that that's all for us. We are finished. But God has a, a better plan. And plan B is really better than plan A. When the ravens stopped bringing birds for Elijah and everything dried up for Elijah, the brook dried up, no more water again, and then the ravens stopped bringing bread, and God said, move right now. To Zarephath. Move Elijah. I'm not through with channels. I'm still the source. I'm still the source. I'm not dried up yet. And then God moved into a, a widow who was going to eat is the, her last meal with her child and died. What, what, the last card. Last card. And God said, this is the widow that will feed you. That was an unusual channel. Unusual channel. We are used to some channels that we already know. But God wants to surprise you with tremendously beautiful channels that will give you multi millions. And then your eyes will not be on that channel, but on God. Praise God. I don't know whether you believe what I'm saying on this one. This is about this thing. Enter in your pocket, too. This one. Your pocket. It's important to enter your pocket. It's, it's very important. It turns out when you have money, you have choices. You know, money gives you choices. Are you aware of that? When you have money, you have choices. You can say, well, I think I'm tired of living in um, Massacre right now. So I think I don't move to Wuxi. Okay? Well, I've been living in, uh, it's a long time I've been living in, um, where will I see now? Where, where will not be in trouble? Uh, uh, Abaji. Oh, there's nobody living in Abaji. I'm tired of living in Abaji. So I want to move to a town. And they say, what's the rent? They say, well, do you want, somebody says, you are living in Abaji. Then another person goes, do you want to, do you, do you want Papi or Karumu or, he said, no. Uh, Papi is nice, but uh, not everywhere in the Papi is good. Okay? I don't know Papi is good. But not everywhere is good in Papi. I don't know what that, the ITV is in the Papi. I don't know that. That's a good place to see in Papi. <laughs> you know what I'm So I want to move to, uh, I want to move to the central area. What would it mean? You go to a landlord. Is, is, if you, if you, I don't know if you're driving around town. These people are looking for accommodation. And you see to let, to let, to let, to let, to let, to let, everywhere to let. Everywhere. And people are driving past the thing. They don't even bribe the check. Because choices. But when you have money, it gives you choices. You can make choices. You can have options. That's why God wants you to mend us the rich. Because we are his children. So we say, your God shall supply all your name. All, not some, but all your name. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 
I will say God is rich. All the silver in this world, all the gold in this world belongs to our God. And last Sunday, we were here last Sunday, we said, it is a, anyone who trusts in man to provide for him or her, is that person living under a curse? Is a curse is any man who put his trust in the arm of flesh. He said, cursed is any man who puts his trust in the arm of flesh. And we said, no matter who that person is, let, don't let your trust be in man to supply your need. He's dangerous. There have been, you see, many families are going through problems. Many of them are, some, some people are buried their spouses, they buried their husbands, buried their wives because of money. They are struggling with, you are supposed to pray for me. You should meet my name. You are the one that provides money. You, this man, you are a very wicked man. You are not giving money to me. You are not giving money to me. And you are saying, as a woman, if you are a woman of God, you can trust God to make you a more time millionaire as a woman. You don't have to hold the old man's shirt and say, you know, not moving no. If you don't give me food, much money, you don't know, pay anywhere for you. Your trust is your husband to provide for you. You are wrong. Your trust is in God. God is your source, not your husband or your wife. Go in a in a marriage. You shared on Tuesday. He said in a marriage, in a in a typical marriage, God blesses people together, two people together. He blesses them, but sometimes he can use one person or two or two of them. And we said on Tuesday, if God uses you as the wife or the husband, you must not be high-minded and be proud. I give an example of somebody, um, I will counsel some years, some years back, a lady whom God, God was using her as a channel to bless the family. God used her as a channel to bring money to the family, to pipe money to, to the family. And then she, got, she became proud. Yes, Mr. Man. No, who are, 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 are you talking to? Because I married you. No, I, I, are, you lucky, are, you, are you lucky to marry, marry someone like me? And then there was a change of channel. Channel changed. Something happened in our office where she was getting plenty of money. All of a sudden, the office was distressed and she was out of job. And now the, the channel dried. There was dryness now. And then, and then somehow, God opened a door for the man. There was a financial flow for the man. And all of a sudden now, the person who was under the table, now sitting on the chair. The table has turned now. And then God is watching how whether the man will say, okay, when you had the money, you show me Pepe. Now I will show you a crop. <laughs> because, you see, God bless you people corporately, if you are, if you are married, corporately. It's a corporate blessing if you are married. You must never be high-minded. And I share my, our story here, me and my wife, all the time we've been together. We have been everything we do together. Myself and my wife, we do everything together. Literally everything. Even my wife wants, to, wants anything, she wants anything, she asks, she will ask me. We want this thing, I say, okay, get that gold, buy that gold, buy this other one, buy this other one, buy this other one, buy this other one. You know what? Here, I want her to look good. Because we started from zero and we stayed together all this while. When things were difficult and when things became sweet, we've been together all the while. And I thank God that God gave me a woman who is not putting the undue pressure on me. There was a time when things were difficult and then she was complaining small, small. I said, No meat. She wants to eat meat. You know, and I told her, Well, we cannot eat it until, until, until the meat appears. You like to eat meat? Yes. Even meat is not as if it's, not as if it's forbidden. <laughs> You give one out to you. <laughs> well, you have to wait. So now what can be under pressure? But by and large, God has helped us as a family to be able to stay together through the thick and thin. And trust God to be a provider. Hey, I mean, if you hear, this, this message I'm saying is a very powerful message. If you listen, you will make it. There's not, it's, God wants you blessed. He's not hiding it. He's distinct from you. He's not going to listen. He wants you, he wants you blessed. And one girl blesses you, don't, be, don't become proud. Because money can develop wings and fly away. 
I know people that were here, the people that were here that were so rich before. They had stores and everything. You go there, they daddy talk to you, they talk to you everything. One day I saw my wife show me one of the, one of those guys in bathroom slippers in Abuja. That man feather clothes, bathroom slippers. Ah, I like it. Are you with this? Nami, oh. Things have changed. The weekend may prosper, but it cannot last. But you go wants you to prosper and you not absolute to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So we are continuing to say, Philippians 4 and he said, My God and my God shall supply. And my God. He said, We use the word my. That means I am a believer. I am a believer in God as my supplier. I am not a believer in man as supplier. No, 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 no. God can use any man and I respect them. I respect them. I love them. But I am not giving credence. I am not giving glory to any man as my supplier because the man can die. Because he is he's, he's blessed in his nostrils. A man can die. People, some people trust their husband to be the only source, the only provider and everything. They fought, fought, fought the man, fought the man, fought the man, fought the man, so that the man died. Now they're looking for government to come and help them. Government. I was in the village one time, me and my wife, and then one of the, some, one woman, one of my wife, my mother's friends in those days. They said they had an announcement that they are going to pay, they are going to give widows money. Widows money, widows. I mean, you, I mean, say tell me how many widows you can have in the village. In the village. Everybody is a widow. They almost, almost everything. This woman left where she came from. To, they said they came to the local government to come and collect widows' money. <laughs> I love her. This woman. How much? 3,500. 3,500. That's what she came for. Everybody became a widow all of a sudden. This, it, you know, everybody looking for money there. They say, you know, some people who, did it, who never even got married, they say, the other one don't die. The other one... Did... <laughs> even some, the other one is still alive. They say, you are, you are a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> you are a dead man. You can't provide. <laughs> you don't get caught, but you are dead. I don't know if you saw somebody, when, somebody in, in the church where they are preaching, somebody say, oh, the, oh, the widow should stand up. The, the, the one should stand up. Ah, you are standing up. Yes, you are dead. <laughs> see, see, I never see him. <laughs> because he's looking out of the man we have. It's wrong. Your trust, you see, what we are doing as a church here is redirect your thinking, redirect your mind, redirect every aspect of your life to focus on God, not man. Unless you learn to focus on God. See, hear me, hear me, look, look at it now. See, this is what I'm teaching you this morning. Number one. If sickness affects your body, are you healed or you are going to be healed? Somebody answer me. Is it past tense or present tense? You are good students. Because why? Because of, because of what? Because the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. In the midst of sickness, in the midst of symptoms in your body, you are feeling pain in your body. I declare, by his stripes, I'm healed. He had me, Mr. Devil, by his stress and him. You maintain your confession in the face of apparent symptoms. It's not easy to do, but if you are, if you are still young in the Christ, as a Christian, because you want to scream, Ah, pay, pay, pay. No, you're wrong. You're dying. By his stress, I am healed. By his stress, I am healed. By his stress, I am healed. You are healed. You have been healed 2,000 years ago. Number one, that do well. Now, are you righteous now? When you get born again, are you righteous now or you become righteous? Huh? Huh? You are righteous. You are righteous now. You have been made righteous. The fact that you got born again, Jesus Christ, when he shed his blood, he made you righteous. You have received the gift of righteousness right now. Are you perfect now? No, you are not perfect. You see, many of us, even after I got born again, I was still looking at women. Look at that girl. Look at that girl. What? 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 Oh, no. Are you perfect now? This is like, look, 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 look. I'm still righteous. 
My righteousness is based on and see, until my eyes come under control. Under control. Under control. Under control. Am I still righteous? I'm still righteous. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So why you are still struggling? You are still struggling? You make that mistake that you fall there? You fall and you stand up? Are you still righteous? Yes, sir. Are still righteous? Because if you are truly born again, hear me, sir. If you are truly born again, you are not looking forward to sin. That's the difference. You see, the, what, I, after I got born again, yeah, I made it. There was a clean break, but then I see for myself, yeah, I stumbled there, I stumbled there, I told this lie there, I told that lie there, and I said, look, 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 I know that I, my, I, I get, my heart grieves me. I know I'm wrong. And I say, Father, look at it, I've sinned again. And I come and ask, please forgive me, have mercy on me. And I would declare that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. I'm a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. I declare I'm a brand new creature. Oh, I'm not a sinner. No, 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 no. I'm a saint. I am a saint. Even if sometimes I do commission, but I'm a saint. And I'm not looking for the commission. I'm making prayer progress. Where I was before, that's not where I am right now. I'm, I'm not alive yet, but I'm making progress. You're righteous. What about rich? Are you when you get born again? Are you are you rich now, or you are going to be rich when the money comes? Say it again. You are rich right now. <laughs> right now, where you are seated, where you are now, with no transport fare to go back home, you are rich. With no money in your account, some of you don't even have an account. You don't even have an account at all. There is, you have never, you never, you have never even entered a bank. But right now, you are what? You want to wake up in the morning and say, look at it. Oh, you rich chef, how are you today? Rich man, how are you? Say, I'm fine. Oh, rich woman, how are you? Fine. And then we say, look at you. There is no, no soup. No soup. <laughs> Devil, I'm rich. I say I'm rich. I am born prosperous. I am as rich as I'm righteous. I'm as rich as I'm healed. His symptoms of lack doesn't make you poor. Lack is a symptom. Lack is a symptom. It's a symptom. You are rich now. Look, look let me show you something now. Jesus did it for you. Jesus did it for you. You know. You, 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 the Bible says, even though he was rich, he became poor. So that you, through his, look at, let's open the, open the Corinthians, let's look at it. Take a look at it now. It will help you. Second Corinthians. I am born prosperous. I am born prosperous. I am born prosperous. Amen. In Jesus' name, I am born prosperous. Oh. I am born prosperous. I am born prosperous. Amen. Hallelujah. I am born prosperous. Yes. I am born prosperous. I am born prosperous. Amen. So we get eight. Eight nine. This is what we need to teach in the body of Christ. It's not to tell people to go and do drive fast so you can get money. You already, have, you already have the money now. You already have the money now. What you need is to is faith. Say, so where does you go to? Huh? Eight nine. Somebody help me. Second Corinthians chapter eight verse nine. Want to go? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That you through his poverty might become what? So if they say poor people, oh, every poor people stand up here, let's pray for you. If they say poor people come forward for prayers. <laughs> ah, let all the poor people come forward here for prayers. So that they can get money. <laughs> Let all the poor people come forward here for prayers. How many of you come forward? 
Nobody there. Because you are not poor. You see, people say that. I say, we poor people. You already finish yourself. You finish yourself. <laughs> they say, we the poor. We the poor people. You are not a poor person. You see, what I'm thinking right now looks simple, but that is how you can make it. I'm bringing you now how God, the God's way for you to become financially prosperous, so you can have more than enough to spend. You must first of all change your mindset. You know, see, in, in 3 John chapter 2, you know what he says? He says, he say, I wish above all that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. In the kingdom of darkness, you can steal money to get prosper, you can do guru and everything and everything. You are not prospering your soul. You have money to come now, you can do gambling. There are different ways you can get money through the kingdom of darkness. But I'm here, I mean, I say, about well, making money God's way. That you must first of all prosper in your inside first. Everything you, God does for you, He starts from the inside. If you want to get healed by divine healing, you must first of all get, you must first of all receive it in your spirit. And your, from your spirit, it goes to your body. When I got born again, when I became, uh, when, I, when I got born again, I became a Christian. And now, I didn't, I couldn't stop all the bad things I was doing at once. But inside me, there was a change in my inside. There was a change in my inside. My inside was changing. I mean, I, 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 I got born again in my spirit. I mean, yeah, this is it. Where's my diagram? No. Look at it. When I got born again, I got born again here. You got born again in your spirit. Your spirit is born again. I, I don't care how broke you are right now. I don't care how much you are owing people. I don't care whatever you are looking for you everywhere because of BC. You are owing so many people. Hear me, you are rich. You are rich. I say you are rich now. Amen. You are prosperous now. Amen. I say when I got born again, hear me well, church. I got born again in here. This was the first place where you get born again. You don't get born again physically. When they say you are born again, you are not born again physically. It's not a physical thing. Okay? It's not a physical thing. When, I, when you got born again, check yourself. If you got born again, if you are fair complexion, you will not become dark. Okay? If you have a mark here, that mark is still there. I don't know if you have, have a mark here. I don't know if you know that I have a mark in it. There's a small mark there. Don't look at it. Don't check it. You don't know. Don't forget it. <laughs> so when you when you when you go born again, if there's any area of your body where there's any any scar, check it and I get born again. The scar is still there. But I hear me. When you get born again, there's a change of spirit. A spirit here. A brand new spirit is taking place here. Is, 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 is here. And then it will take a while for the thing to manifest outside. Some of, the, some of the way you speak, the way you talk, the way you anyhow, the way you talk anyhow, everything begins to change, small, 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 small. Yeah, because as you feed on the word of God, from your inside there, you begin to change outside. It takes time. So right now, as a born again Christian, you are rich now. You, this thing you are going to get to. Because in this church, we want people to prosper. You are going to, if you are going to stay in this church, you are going to prosper. I think you know that one. There is no way you can stay here and be poor. Eh? Because we, that God, the, the, the overseer here, for we are not poor. You will be like your pastor. Uh, if your pastor has money to spend, you too will spend where well, well. you, you will spend it. Amen. Uh, when they say poor people stand up, let's pray, you will say, no, I'm not a poor man. And you're not going to use your mouth to say you're a poor man. Look at this, 2 Corinthians. Let me show you something, 2 Corinthians here. 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, it's Timothy, not 2 Corinthians, Timothy. It's a very interesting scripture. When you read it, I don't know what, what comes to your mind when you read Timothy, chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6. How are you? Verse 17. Let you gather. Command those who are rich in this present age. 
not to be haughty, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things. When you, when you read the scripture, what comes to your mind? You say, huh? Yes, tell them. Tell those which you go. Tell them. Tell them. Who. Command those who are rich. Yes. Those who are rich. Yes. Tell them. What do you say when you see that kind of thing? Huh? You say, God is talking to me now. Because I'm, I'm a rich man. So I should be very careful not to be proud. You are taking that scripture for yourself. I don't know. You didn't get what I said. I don't think you got what I said right now. Some of you just travel to the Uber market. And please come back. Listen now. When you hear say, command those who are rich, you don't be proud. You are thinking of the, you now think, hey, yes, let me remember. Ah, that, that man who near my house, he gave money away, but they, 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 they very proud. That other one is very rich. They get from all of them. Hey, better do this place. Oh. It's not good to be rich, but be proud. Oh. That means you are a poor man and this is very rich. So that's it. That's it. That's it. You should say, yes, God is talking to me now. I take this picture as meant, it's meant for me, that I should not be proud because I'm rich. Even if there's no money for, for, for you to get out of town. You believe you are rich. You, unless your mindset changes, you can't make it. I don't know, if, if, if you get what I'm saying this morning. Unless you change your mind that you're not a poor man, you're not a poor woman, that you are rich. It doesn't matter the environment where you are staying right now. God, it was the fact that you are born again believer makes you a rich person. You need to just spend time on the word of God and see how can I get these riches manifested physically. There was a story of somebody who was, who was, who was who, a, a, a missionary, a missionary who was, was going to an African country. He was turning an African country to preach and then he saw in the, that country was so poor. He went to a particular country. The country was so poor. People were eating from those beans. They were so wretched, they had no food to eat. You see the children's head were as big head and tiny, thin, thin, this tiny neck. They were in poverty and squalor. Everything was wretched. And then in the midst of that place, he saw a big, long, large acre of land with a wrought iron fenced around with lawns and beautiful garden. Everything so beautiful and so cool. And a mansion sitting there, beautiful mansion in the midst of squalor. And he said, What? What a contradiction. Who is staying in that kind of house in the middle of the people are so poor like this? And then for us, it was the, it was the uh, uh, American ambassador. It was the U.S. embassy in that country. Then the man said, ah, 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 bah. Let the man sell the thing now and distribute to this poor. You know people think like that. I was telling somebody before, somebody said, look, you, 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 you Pentecostals, you are very, you always, uh, you talk about prosperity and then uh, this thing, after all, you are supposed to be giving money to the poor people. Give money to the poor people. If you have money, share it to the poor people. Do you, know, you know how much you pay for, this, for, for, it, for rent here? You will stay in this, in this place. It's a lot of money. Somebody says, why do you pay that kind of money for rent? You should use the money to, to feed the poor. Then go and stay under the bridge. That's the thinking now. That's the poverty thinking. We should use the man to go and feed the poor. Now hear me, church. God has not sent you. Let, listen, let, let, me, let me see this now. So let me understand me. It's good to help the poor people. It's good to help the poor people. But God didn't give you the responsibility to make money so that you can distribute your money to the poor. I don't know why God is saying right now. Many people come to church because they believe that if you come to church, the poor, they are poor people. So the church will come and help them financially. That's the reason why they come to church. Last Sunday, somebody came here and said, after, the, after everybody left, they said, yeah, yeah, he came and met, and met, uh, met me. Ah, he was in church, he came and met Pastor Bulus. Yes, I came to church and everything. Uh, my wife had just left and everything. Uh, 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 you know, there is a, what do you say now? Somebody wants to demolish the house. Oh, is it the accommodation problem? You know, Abuja, anybody wants to, want to blow light, put accommodation problem there. And so right now, they, have, they, they are coming to come and carry their loan now and everything. Right now, there is pressure and all that kind of everything. This man didn't come to church. Too. He came after service and was ascended. Maybe he was coming and he didn't know, he forgot the time maybe. And came after service and then I said he lied that he was in church. Now people come, they want us to 
You say, well, people who are rich now, ah, people who are even on TV, take the TV money and distribute to the poor. Thank God it was Blues we met. And thank God Blues had his anger under control. Even though he will have his shirt. And I will, I, will have hold his, I, will, I will hold his shirt alongside with him. Because he wants to come and take advantage of people. <laughs> what are you again? People come to church to come and take money. They believe that they are poor people. As long as you are like that, you can never make it. You forget it. You are going to die in poverty. Poverty will be stink out of your body like this. Because you can never see yourself as a rich person. See, God wants you to... See, God is God's will that you become financially prosperous. And I'm not saying you cannot help the poor people. I don't know if anybody is poor. But hear me, hear me, hear me church. If, if, if somebody is in need, if somebody is in need, you can help them. I'm not wrong with somebody, somebody in need. But you don't have to give people... Look, if, I, if I give... Most of the money we show now, me and my wife, the money we show... We saw the people who have money. I don't know what God has said now. Most of the money we saw, we saw out. We saw it to people who already have money. I don't know whether this is straight to you now. You think I should, I should carry my money, pack load money, when I, and go to, go to the junction there. Uh, go to... Uh, which junction will I call now? That will not be in trouble. Uh, call any junction. Now, where, the, where, where you have the beggars? Huh? Which junction? Now, where do you have beggars? Beggar Junction. So, that one is safe. So, you see the beggars here? Yeah, take 1,000, 500, 1,000, 500, 1,000. That means I've so You have no so seed. You don't be foolish. You are foolish. Your money is supposed to go to where the. First of all, number one, I will going to sow seed to anyone who is preaching the gospel. Number one. I want to source it to anyone who is adding to God's kingdom. I don't care what the person has money or not. That's not my business. Anyone who is making the God's work easy and making it easier for us to serve God, I will show that person. It doesn't matter if the person has plenty of money. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm doing? I'm trying to plan where I can get this, where I can get results. Some of you are now lost you. I've lost you now here. Come back, please. I beg you. Don't leave me yet. Because many who come and they are expecting to be taken care of. Hear me, church. We are not beggars. Christians are not beggars. Look at Psalm. There are many people who believe that once, you know, as a Christian, Psalm uh, 37. Another seven. Verse 25. Another seven twenty five. Some thirty seven twenty five. Are we there? Want to go? I've been young and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's not what? I have never seen Elijah for shaking, no, it's not begging for bread. Christians are not beggars. You see, if you check the, the, during the missionary era, when they came to Nigeria to come and do uh, evangelism and to start uh, churches and uh, Western education, anywhere they allow Christians, you have few beggars there. Are you aware of that? Go to anywhere where you, where you allow Christianity to, 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 to flourish. You have few beggars. Because Christianity means light. It's light, light. Those of you have been here in this church now, you have been here for maybe let's say six months. You have been consistent for six months. Six months, one year. You know that you are, not, you are, you are, getting, you are getting financially better every day. Unless you don't admit it. Unless you refuse to do the word of God, you are getting financially better every day. Even you don't, you don't have to say yes. I see so much of you. I know many of you the way you look when you came, and I see the way you are right now. You know why? Because Jesus Christ, is, 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 He has made you rich. 
it, it's not, I'm not saying that. I mean, I will call, I didn't, I mean, I'm not making anybody rich here. I mean, I know, I know, you know that. I'm not. I can't make you rich. I'm just a, I'm a human being. But the same God who's making me rich is also making you rich. You know what I'm saying? You are getting rich every day. You are rich now. You are getting rich every day. I don't know what I got. Are you are you following what I'm saying this morning? Because see, the point is this. Right now, we are looking, we're going to check, we're going to look at the children of Israel. See the example of the children of Israel. Look at what happened to the children of Israel. When they left Egypt and they were going to a place called Canaan. And look at what happened to them. We read, we read, let's look at, let's look at uh, First Corinthians, quickly. So you see the example of the, of the children of Israel. God, used, God wants us to use them as an example. First Corinthians chapter 10. The children of Israel. First verse of 10, verse, we look at 9. We look at, we're going to look at 9 to 13. You are going to make it. Uh, you are, you, it, it will be obvious financially you will, because you are rich now and your riches will be evident to all in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 9 to 13. I will hear. First verse of chapter, chapter 10. Verse 9 to 13. I would hear. Yeah. I look at it. Say, Now let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by serpents. Verse 10. Nor complain, as some of them also complain, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Look at verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take it, lest he fall. 13. No temptation has overtaken you except as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to what? Bear it. Now, what is he talking about here? Look at the parallel, parallel between the children of Israel and the, and the church. The church is modern Israel. The church is modern Israel. Now you are here last Sunday when I shared about when I shared about the children of Israel. They were, they were slaves in Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt. For 400 years they were slaves. They were slaves. They were in debt. They didn't have money to eat. They had to give them food to eat. They were indebted to their slave master, the Egyptians. Pharaoh was like Satan. They were oppressed for about 400 years. And look at what God did for them. God, God overnight, God made a, a change. Okay? They were delivered from Egypt after about 40 years. But before God delivered them, you know what God did? God, God, God said, go and plunder the Egyptians. We shared this on Tuesday. We said, okay, go and plunder. Go, go, go collect the Egyptians' gold, their silver, their properties. Go collect it. Overnight, slaves became multimillionaires. Stay with me now. God was teaching them something. Now, these people were slaves in Egypt. But overnight, they became multi millionaire. Can you imagine? You, 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 have, you have served somebody as a houseboy. You have served somebody as a, you are, you are a staff in that office working for your boss. Your boss has about 50 houses in Matama, 100 houses in, 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 in Wuse. He has houses all over the place in Lekki, in uh, Victoria Land, in, uh, in uh, different places in the country. You are the one in charge of all the files, all the documents and everything. You are the one that helps them drive all the agreement and everything. You are in charge of all these things. You are in charge of, and you have been there for several years working like a slave. And then one night God says, go and tell your master to give you anything you want. Imagine that with me now. Now you go to the master and say, master, say yes, 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 my boy. My boy or my, my, yes, my boy or my house girl. My house guy, yes? What's it? Give me that your jewelries. Jewelries, which one? That gold. The one the one you bought for 1.3 million. Oh, is that what you want? Okay, no problem. Take. Your bags. That's your bag. That's your new bag. You bought from UK. Give me that one. That's your red bag. Bring your red bag with me. <laughs> Carry your red bag. Give me that your red bag. Carry your red bag. Give me your red bag. I want that clothes. That's... Those Hollandese, those sets you bought, the old box. There's no problem. 
Then I want you to also give me your properties. He said, okay, do you want the one in Yanyan? Oh, my, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want the Yanyan one. My tama. Who say? VI. I have done the agreement. Sign this one. Sign this, sign this, sign this. Give me, give me the one. And then you look and say, okay, okay, you know what? That your car. That your, that your new car you just bought from that place. Those two cars, give me the two keys. My first son can drive, the second son can drive. Give me those two keys. And then the, you plunder the you plunder your boss, you plunder him completely. This was what happened in Egypt. In overnight, they plundered the Egyptians. They became multi-millionaire overnight. Stay with me now. Now, after they got the money, they got everything now. They become multi-millionaire. Go now, send them to on a journey. Say, look, now get all the money you have made, all the paper, land documents, everything you have now. The gold, the silver and everything. Now, hit the bush. God began to take them through a journey. There was no shopping mall for them to buy something. You have all the money, there's no shopping mall. There is no way you can buy food in the bush. Why did God do that? You know why God did it? He wants to teach them to, to pay. I don't know whether I go, where I go right this morning. Tell your neighbor, the just shall live by faith. Just shall live by faith. Say, neighbor, you have no option but to live by faith. Now, God was teaching the children of Israel to live by faith. And he gave them tests. They are different tests. They went through different tests. Test, fail test, and they kept failing. I don't know how many of you have you failed exams before. You failed exams. I share with you how I failed many exams. Many exams before. I failed many exams. And then sometimes, you think you are, I thought I studied and I came back, come to the place, so when I was in primary school, I used to fail a lot in primary school. Primary school, I had thought I read book. Then I came and they gave me the, they gave, in those days, they used to write exams on the board. On the, I don't know what, they don't do that now, they, they don't do that now. They used chalk to write the exams on the board. Sometimes they say we should go out. And then when we, they finish writing the exams on the board, and they, all of you come inside. So we we'll carry our pencil. Everybody's going like this. <laughs> That time, all of us became gentle boys. <laughs> me, me, who used to climb trees, climb all kinds of trees before. I became gentle now. I'm so sober now because of exam fear. They call it exam fever. You will not fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because fear is of the devil. Refuse to fear. Sir, sir, no fear here. No fear. I refuse to fear you, devil. Fear. fear. I resist to. Go away from, from me. There was some exam I would have, I would have passed if I didn't fear. But I, I feel them. Because of all the panic, when I now look at the questions, everything looks difficult. Because of fear. And then you can't look at your, you look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Why are you doing giraffe? Wait. The person you're looking at doesn't even know you too. Huh? <laughs> you know what I've had a kind of thing before? The person you're looking at doesn't know it. They failed the exam. Let's look at one of the exams they failed. Go to uh, Exodus. Ex- thank you. Exodus. Exodus 16. They failed the exams. The faith, faith, this is faith exam now, faith test. How many of you know that the devil is a wicked person? He will come and tempt you. He will bring all kinds of, all kinds of problems along, across the way. And uh, 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 Exodus 16, 15. Exodus 16, 15. Now look at what God did for them here. See, are you, are you 15? So when the children of when the when, when the uh, when the children of Israel saw saw it, they said to one another, "What is it? 
For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you. Okay? Okay? Now, before you go there, before, read, 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 read um, verse, verse, uh, tw verse 12. Okay? He said, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall, you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Huh? What is God saying here? He said, you are going to, I will provide bread for you, I will provide meat for you, and you will know that I am the Lord your God. And you will know that I am your source. Have you ever been believing God for something? Maybe you need financial, uh, you need money. You, need, you are believing God for something, and you don't know how the money will come. You don't even have the idea how will God provide food for me in the wilderness. We are inside the wilderness. We are inside the bush here. There are no fruits here. No yam. Nothing to do. The how is God going to bring the food? It has never happened anywhere that God rained food from heaven. They never knew lie lie that the way God will supply their name is through raining manna, raining food from heaven. They are, they can never even think. It can never cross their mind. But look at it now. See. Where does it go? See, look at 16 now. Okay? Okay, let's, 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 do, let's, do, let's go from 12 to 16. Okay? So it was that, it, so it was, it was that quails came, came up at evening and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is this? What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Now, let, let, give, it, give it in. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather it according to each one's name. One, one, one own omer for each person. Uh, according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his, in his, in his tent. In the family. Then, then the children of Israel did so. Did so. And gathered some, some, more or less. So when they measured it by commas, he, he who gathered much had nothing left, left over. And he who gathered little had no, had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each, each one's need. Now look at it now. And Moses said, let no one leave, number one test, let no one leave any of it till morning. No. Yeah? Don't grab it and go and keep it in the bank. Listen now. Look at it. See it, see it now. In the morning. Where did I stop now? Which verse? Huh? 19. But look at what they did now. Notwithstanding, they did not hit Moses. But some of them, some of them left part of it until morning. And it bred worms and stank. They were trying to be smart. Who knows when God may not provide anything? Who knows? They may, they, 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 if you don't see her tomorrow. Huh? Who knows? If you don't see her tomorrow. This God cannot be trusted. Look at it now. And then, and then the stank was, and Moses was angry with them. Now, John 23. Okay? Then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath, a Sabbath rest. A holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today, and boil what you will boil, and lay out for yourselves all the remains to be kept until morning. So they laid it up till morning, as Moses commanded, and it did not stink, nor were there any worms in it. Huh? Then Moses said, "Eat that today. For today, for, for, eat, eat that. For, eat, eat that today. For today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you will gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, uh, 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 the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Now, look at the seventh now. Now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather, to gather, but they found none. And Lord said to Moses, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Now hear me, church. This is, this, listen now. Listen now. This is God trying to train them how to depend on him. God is trying to train them to depend on him as, 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 his, as their provider. I don't think what I'm, what I'm sharing this morning. God wants to say, look, he said, look, as a, as a Christian, God says, I want you to trust me to fight for you. Trust me to give you a good accompaniment in Abuja. Trust me to give you a good job. 
Trust me to find a fine job for you. Trust me to give you a good accommodation. Trust me to give you a good spouse. Trust me to give you whatever you are believing God. Trust me to provide for you. They, they, God said, if you go, you will not find it. This is the way they went. Huh? They kept disobeying God. Disobeying God. And you see the streets over here. They went, there was no water. They didn't know where water was going to come from. They are looking for water. They said there's no water. They say, why are you brothers? Come on, come on, kill us. You brother, come on, kill us. They forgot the same God who parted the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea for them. God gave them food from heaven. And rain, 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 rain meat from heaven for them. And they say, where will God bring water? Where is water? We will die of thirst. And God told Moses, hit the rock with a rod. And then there was water, not just a small water, not a borehole. There was a gushing. Heavenly borehole. Coming out, 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 out of the water, out, 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 of the, out, out of the rock. Not from the pond, not from the fountain. From the, from the rock. Hear me, church. You know what God was trying to teach the children of Israel? Depend on me. That is on a daily basis. Depend on me. At the same time, I will provide your money. I buy money for transport. Well, if you need to go to church, listen now. You want to go to church. And they say there's no transport fear. God says, you know what? Pray. Ask God for money for transport. Then get your Bible ready and, and stand on the road and believe God for transport. Many of us here, we have seen miracles. Of, miracles of, and yet we still cannot trust God. When you disbelieve God, it pays him. Unbelief is more painful than sexual sins. Unbelief. When you don't believe in the integrity of God to provide for your needs, you doubt this integrity. Many of us believe man more than God. It's really sad. Church is sad. Look at what God did for the children of Israel. When they were going to leave Egypt, Overnight, how could you? How do you think, even for God, how do you think your, your masters can go ahead and give all them all the things they have, the gold, the jewelry they have? How, why, even for God, could it have happened? Look at what God promised, promised us now as, God, as God's children. Listen, listen now, look, go to Proverbs. See, God promised for you now as a modern church. This, this is the promise He has for you. Proverbs chapter 13. Proverbs 13. Thank you, brother, for quickening and understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Nobody will, nobody will miss what I'm saying today in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 13, verse 22. Are you there? 22. Want to go? A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. For the word of the sinner is what? Stored up for the righteous. The word of the sinner is stored up for you. Now look at the good Ecclesiastes. Out of Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. This is very, this is very, this is very, very powerful. Uh, are we there? Chapter 2, verse 26. 26. Want to go? For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. Are you good in God's sight? Good. So you are God's child. You are good in sight. But to the sinner, who is the sinner? Unbeliever, unbeliever, unbeliever. To the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and what? Collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. This also is vanity and grasping for the wind. Now look at the word. He, he, he gives the job of gathering and collecting. They are working and toiling and doing everything stored up for you. The same thing that happens in the children of, the children of Israel when they were leaving Egypt, they were going to the Canaan, like to, to Canaan. God gave everything they have, that the, the unbelievers had gathered over the years. In one night, they got it. How will you get your own? Listen now. Listen, listen very well. Now, this picture is very important. But don't, don't misunderstand me what I'm saying. You are not supposed to look at unbelievers and say, Ah, this money. Oh, yeah, okay. That just come from church now. May give me all the all the land you have and everything you take. That's all. That's it's not, it's not the same way. It's not the same way. Now hear me, Cholu. Listen, listen, listen. Right now, right now, 
there is more than enough money that is given accounts in the world right now, and the owners are dead. You think God has said now? Tell your neighbor, there is more than enough money for you in different accounts of unbelievers who are already dead and their money is lying there gathering interest. You will not be, you, and, and many of them, their children are not even aware. There are many people, even in Nigeria here, where are we in Nigeria here? There are many people who have shares. Shares, secret, they bought it without their wife's knowledge. Secret shares, some of them in hundreds of millions. And yet, the man is dead. And there is no record. Of, there was somebody, by, uh, uh, the, the, the man died, the husband, the husband died. The, the husband was sharing with my wife sometime. This man had all kinds of things. He didn't know, nobody knew until the man died. The woman was crying, 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 crying. Before he started seeing children's pictures. They went and checked the man's out. The man has some secret families. Documents that they can't even, that the documents that cannot be traced. They are things that people have accumulated. They have in the, they are, the board shares. They have money in different accounts. Some of them are just breathing there, gathering interest, and they are dead. If you go to Switzerland, there are so much money in Swiss account right now. They are, they don't, the owners cannot be traced. We have more than no money locked up in different banks across the world that can preach the gospel and blanket the world with the gospel, stored up by Satan. They have got the money, they kept the money in the account, and the devil has killed them. Some of them have children. Their children cannot trace their money. They cannot trace their father's money. It's locked up in the bank forever. And God is saying, that money is stored up for you. How will you access the money? By faith. That money is whatever you dare by grace. You are going to receive it by faith. You see, listen. This is it. Look at it now. See it. Look at some, look at look at some one one five. Look at it. I think on on Sunday or so. Some one five. You can't be complaining and and expect to prosper. Some one five. Some one five verse thirty seven. How would they? How would they have that He said, He also brought them out with silver and gold. And there was no what? There was no feeble among them. Nobody was sick. This is the children of Israel now. We have a better covenant. We are God's children. These people are God's servants. These people are God's servants. We are God's children. Once you get born again, you are God's child. Look at Deuteronomy, chapter 6. You need to know God as a channel, as your only channel. I'm sorry, 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 the only source. Deuteronomy chapter 6. As the only source, and you can use any channel. Any channel you can use. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Have you? 11. Now look at it. He said, okay, let's do it. Let's start from 10, okay? From 10. It says, so it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities, which you did not build, houses full of all good things, which you did not, you did not, you did not fill, even, uh, even out wells, which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees, which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Now here he's saying, God is going to give you houses you do not, do not build. Okay? He's going to give you, it's going to, like we see, I just now say, things have been stored up for you. 
that, that the enemy, the, the enemy, the enemy has, is children, not sinners. They have stored up good for you. And that you are going to access it by faith. But hear me, church. For you to transit now from where you are now, where we are now, many, many of us are when I still don't have enough, we are still managing things, things are a little bit challenging, up and down, up and down. How you handle where you are, listen now. How you handle where you are right now determines whether you are going to get promotion to Kenan. I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm too slow, too fast. Okay, let me see. How you handle where you are now determines whether you are going to get promotion to Kenan. Okay, tell your neighbor. How you handle your circumstance now? Whether you complain or you thank God determines your promotion to the next level of a land of plenty. I don't know where I got it now. You're able to get it. See, now many of us here, we have not passed Pamar 1 yet. In God's kingdom, no automatic promotion. Huh? I don't know if there's what they call LMG. I don't know if they LMG. Let my people go. There are times when, when, you know, when I, you know, in the primary school in the village in those days, they, 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 some teacher would say, look, 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 I just pass you. Yeah? I just pass you. Tell your brother, I just pass you. Huh? <laughs> In other words, you didn't for pass. They call it social promotion. Social promotion. That means they just let us do. Let's not leave our classmates to get and go the other ones. When when they, when they are above, we are, they are not. We are not beneath. Let's follow them to the next class. Okay. In God's kingdom, not like that. If you don't pass now, you are not. You are not going anywhere. If you don't pass the test, listen now. Freedom over sexual sin. You remain with the same sexual sin that has been dogging you, dogging your part. You are still in that same sexual sin. You don't expect to move to the next level. If you cannot pass right now, the problem of dealing with offense, offense they committed about 10 years ago, you still have not overcome it. How are you going to overcome the new offense? Somebody, there was there when we know we are, somebody nobody did all wrong, and I was battling with it, and then, I mean I was I felt bad. We had that time we not this church, and I did, I was hot. I mean the people, it's church people anyway. It's church, you know church folks, you know church members can offend each other. So I said, why you do this? And why should they, why should people do this to us? What is the reason why this should happen to us? Look at this people. I'll try to help them and see the way they paid us back. You know what God said. I got to in the one place in the Bible. I think it was Jeremiah also. I'm not sure that it's Jeremiah. He said, if you are fighting with men on, on the foot and you are weary, what will happen when you begin to fight men on horses? I don't know. Drink, uh, you know you are, I lost you now, so you didn't get what I said now. You know what you say? What is the horses and men? Eh? What did it matter? Eh? <laughs> if you are fighting with men on foot and you are already weary, what will happen when the men on horses come against you? In other words, this kind of offense now that uh, you are still struggling with it, this offense that Susan was struggling with it, what will happen when a bigger offense comes? Do you know how many people have died because they were offended? Huh? I said, do you know how many people have died because they were offended? These people offended us. We are trying to help them and they offended us. And I couldn't sleep again. And God said, it is this morning that you did for you, you are, you are dying already. What will happen when the bigger one comes? The children of Israel. Do they want to my own? You need to the children of Israel. I'm sorry, 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 not children. Uh, the disciples. The disciples in the book of Acts. They was they suffered for Christ. They were beaten. They did them. They beat them. They removed their disciples and beat them away for preaching the gospel. Uh, and then Israel will come and complain and say, "Excuse me, God." This is even punishment because you are preaching gospel. Let them die. Let them die. Die. No. They say they went and threw a party. They were rejoicing because they, they were they were they were privileged to suffer with the gospel. They went rejoicing because the Bible says they were rejoicing because they were counted what to suffer for Christ. 
I have not suffered this thing. What is it you suffered? If you cannot pass simple test of unforgiveness, simple of unforgiveness is taking you. Look, let me tell you one thing. You can know how mature you are as a Christian by by checking how long it takes for you to forgive somebody who wrongs you. I don't know. I don't know where I go right now. Tell your neighbor. You can measure your spiritual growth. By checking how long it takes you to forgive those who wrong you. Does it take you one minute? One day? One year? Ten years? Twenty years? Thirty years? Forty years? If you survive, people are holding God for forty years. There was a story me and my wife were listening to. The guy, this guy, they had offense against somebody. The ma- that woman was a, 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 class, a class teacher, a class teacher in school in, in the U.S. The the man, the, when he, he was, she was one that taught the, the the father of that guy. When the father was a student in his in in her, in her school, the father offended her. Eh? The father had graduated and had given birth to children, and his, one of his sons came to class, same class, the same one was she teaching. Thirty years after, then he asked us her name. Imagine the name, it was the same son name. He said, what? what? Your name? He said, yes. He said, yeah, stupid, 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 Ah, your father, stupid, you, stupid. Because what the father did 30 years ago, 30 years. Cannot deal with offense for 30 years. The children that came, that innocent child that was born, they didn't know what the father did. Though. The woman is cooking on her, and then every day say, stupid, stand up, stupid, stand up. From today, your name is now stupid. He said, as long as you are in this class, you, are, you must never bear your name. I will call you stupid. Because you are a father of offense. 30 years. You can't, there is no way you can get promoted in Christ as long as you have not passed where you are now. The children, the children of Israel spent 40 years for 11 days journey. 11 days. You want to get married. And then when the man comes, after the first week, the second week, the third week, hey, you become like Jezebel all over the man. And then you say, I don't know why. Because you have not passed the test. You have, you have not learned to live with people. You, cannot, you can't stay with people. And hear me, church. There is no way. There are people who want to get married and they cannot live with anybody. Nobody they can't live with anybody. They are picking fault with every human being. If you are picking fault with every human being, are you going to marry an angel? Even if you marry an angel, all of a sudden that angel will start looking like, like Lucifer to you. Because you have not dealt with it. Hear me, in, 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 in the realm of the spirit, there is no automatic promotion in the realm of the spirit. Even if you are a pastor, listen now, if you are a pastor and you cannot pass the test of paying your tithe, you don't know how to pay your tithe, you are not a tither as a pastor, you cannot pass the financial promotion test. That's why many people are putting pressure on people. Hear me, they put pressure on people to come and give them money. Hear me, there are many, there are people who are pastors who are putting pressure on people to give them money because they have not passed the money test. If you don't pass the money test as a pastor, whether you are a pastor or reverend or bishop, it doesn't matter. You are still going to grapple with poverty. It's a test, you have to pass it. You know, these people couldn't pass the test. The children of Israel, for 40 years, they can't feel until they die. They can't pass the test. They are used to believing. They are used to believing in what they can see in Egypt. Everything is by sight. If they cannot see, they can't believe it. I'm saying the joy shall live by faith. It is by faith they are going to prosper by faith. 
And as long as it's, you, you are, every small problem you are complaining, no transport, you are complaining, that you no, no soup, no, you don't you don't meet your soup, you are complaining. No uh, children's school fees or children uh, pampas is already is, is finished. Uh, my uh, what is it called? Uh, dross is is, is torn. My uh, my skirt is torn. My uh, what is it torn? Everything you are putting pressure on your man or your wife. You are not in faith. You are living unbelief, and you can't. Pass, you are not passing the test. As long as there's a problem in the house, and you, you see, faith does not put pressure on human beings. Faith does not pressure human beings. Faith puts pressure on God. The pressure is on human beings. Hear me, church. We, we, we like to blame people. One that's the problem, you start blaming this one. It's because of you. It's because, because I marry you, that's why I'm, that's why I'm poor. It's because you, you drunk, you drunk, you drunk, you drunk, you drunk, you marry you. Me too, now, now, poor, this one, this one. We are blaming people. We hear me, church. You can never make it like that. This one, we are not passing the test. You must remove your eyes off of human beings to help you. Remove, some people are blaming their boss. They say, my boss, you know, the salary, you know, they're too, too small. They cut and they cut my salary self. They know they pay me better bonus. I don't know how I could survive for this kind of salary. The man, the, this is our guy, we can man. This is our guy, we can. Good offices. They will use their mouth to abuse our gas. They say, the man, no, he is stingy. The man, too, they stingy. Too much. You know, they give person cover. So, this is your source now. Your boss is your source. When you complain that, you know what, you are believing that your boss is your source. You are wrong. Because God can even make your enemy to bless you. Nobody doesn't like you to bless you. As long as you are complaining about people not helping you, somebody, people are going to complain that as a pastor, I just want to give them money. I should come and give them money as a pastor. Not this church, some other church. I should do work. And don't, when I finish working, I put my eyes on God and God bring money to me supernaturally and I use my faith to get the money. When I use my faith to get the money, he said, Allah is back, you know what? Doesn't work like that. There are people who are expecting. They, you see, it, when, you are not in faith when you are expecting human beings to bring it. It's human beings you are looking for. It's, you are not in faith. Can you imagine, for instance, now, me waiting for, for your money to come so I can survive? It's wrong for a pastor to go to a congregation, listen now, and begin to put pressure on the people to give. If you don't give, if you don't give, God will cast you. He will cast you. He <laughs> will cast you. He will cast you. He will cast you. It's wrong. In this church, listen now. In Eagle Christian Center, if you don't want to give your offering, keep it. Keep it, get, get, put zip on it, zip it again. Because our God supplies our need, not based on the congregation. What we are doing as a young church, many people are baffled by it. This is a young ministry looking at on different television stations. How do we pay for it? Our God supplies. Our God supplies. In this church, I don't know what, what anybody is giving. I don't know. Even those who are fellow pastor, assistant pastor, I don't know whether they give or they don't give. You know, concern too. It's their private affair. I'm not involved in their private affair. It's their wife. Their wife should ask them, how much are you giving? No, no, no. Say, come. Uh, come, oh, Larry. Baby, I'm going to how much you they give. Oh, make a share. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ask them. It's not my business. I did not design any envelope where you have to put, a, put the amount you are paying and then put your name and your phone number. You know, concern at all. My God has supplied. You must never put pressure on people. And the same thing, those of you who are, who, are, who, are, who are business people, you are selling something. Either you are selling land or you are selling clothes or selling books, whatever you are selling. Never you put pressure on people to buy it. Never. It is it's a, it's lack of faith 
When you put pressure on people to buy your goods, it's lack of faith. You are not faith in God. You, you look at him as a source. He are, is a lie. It grieves the Holy Ghost. When you put pressure on human beings, it grieves him. Ah, oh God. Oh God. Make me buy now, buy. Okay, buy, buy now, buy. I beg, I beg, I beg, make no go. Buy, 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 buy. You are a buffoon. Based on Bible, don't be me talking. My Bible talking. Because you are, you are caused. Bible says you are caused. You are not looking up to man for help to help you. I remember, I remember that all those times me and my wife we were selling, we were trying to sell land, and then we, we wanted to sell land at all. We wanted to sell land. The person gave all the show for to sell. Ah, this is, your, this is the only opportunity, only opportunity to. Ah, if we don't sell this land, we don't make it. Hey, land, land, land. You are our source. You are our source. You are our source. Then we go somebody wanted to buy. The person say, oh, okay, okay, let me see, let me see. Ah, it's a very good place, eh? central area. Ah, ah, they eh, nice, it's cheap, where, where, look, and they come. And then they are waiting for the man, waiting for the man, waiting for the man. And then the owner say, please, oh, Gaza, I need the show for I say, no, this is already sold. We can't get the show for now. We blow light. Oh. We wanted to get, we wanted to get it sold at all costs. And then the man didn't show up again. The same man who said, was going to buy, carry one, I don't know where the motor, where this is, stolen motor self. Brought the jeep. Say yes, I have the money. Cho, 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 cho. See, see, the man didn't get it. He didn't buy the things. We have to take the things. Oh God, take your shoe off. <laughs> let the rest. God, we are looking out to you now. Unless you remove your eyes off of human beings. Unless, you see, let me tell you one thing. If it, it takes you 40 years, 40 years, you will still be in the same place. So even though you are rich now, you cannot see the thing. There is no ego. You can't see it physically. You are rich, yes, but are you going to remove your eyes of human beings? You, the, I shared on Sunday, I said many people, they are trusting their wife to help them. Their wife. You trust your wife to come and help you? You are believing that your wife will come and help you? You are a sorry case. And you need deliverance. Deliverance prayer. <laughs> That's what you need. You trust your wife to help you. What if what if your wife is sick or something happens? That was you know one of my one of my colleagues in those days he used to tiptoe one day tiptoe to the, the wife's purse in the night. He was still in the wife's money. <laughs> ah, he was still in the wife's money in the night, and the wife say, eh, "I see you." <laughs> I see you. <laughs> it's all right. So, if you don't be one, why, that you don't be different between the money and your money and our money. There's no difference. In a deep Christian home. You have to look around, you have to go the night at this. Where you come see? It doesn't work. If she doesn't agree with you, no problem. Your God will supply. What I'm trying to do this morning here at church is to redirect your, redirect your attention from everything in the physical that you can see physically to an invisible God, an invisible source, the same God that rain manna from heaven, the same God that has done many things in your own life that you can testify to now, that God, you, can see, you have seen his power in your life. When will you learn to trust him? Don't, I said, if, wherever, I don't care where you are living in town now in Abuja. If God can take you to a better accommodation, give you a better car, give you a better house, and equip you for, and, and, and show you like a showcase, like showcase. Make you like a showcase for other people to see. He will let you trust him. But say, his eyes are running to and fro. To and fro, to and fro. To see who we prove, he, he show, to show himself strong. Those who are, who are loyal to him. Loyal. That means those who believe and put their trust and put their rely on him. He will show himself strong on their behalf. He can't do that for you as long as your eyes are not on him. Your eyes are on human beings. Somebody will give you, somebody gave you a note here. You can, eh, nah, I got, I got a note, that note, that note. You see, you can go to an office, listen now, where nobody knew you ever in your life and get a big job. You think what I said? You say you can step to an office as a child of the Most High God. 
step to an office we use in the name of Jesus Christ to secure a prompt job. This God is too big. And as long as you, are, you do not learn, see, hear me, this is a lesson. We are on a faith journey. You are a children of Israel on a faith journey. Trust God for our healing. Don't beg in doctors. I beg, doctor, I mean, please now beg. Make you give me an appointment now. I beg, I, I beg. I don't need QCs. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, doctor, I beg. God, God is jealous. I'm not saying doctors are bad. Please don't get me wrong. Please go to the doctor. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Is that, is that clear now? But what I'm saying is that your eyes are not. I was telling a lady, I said, Madam, it's easy for you to get healed. Yeah, she's, she's in the hospital. I said, Don't let your eyes be on these doctors. The doctor can misdiagnose you. They can misdiagnose you. Are you aware of that? Even in the United Kingdom, they, someone was sharing with us when we went to the UK. They, are, they make big, big mistakes. Big mistakes, foolish mistakes in UK. Are you either on them? Some people, the doctor is like God to them. It's like it's like God is not Do you know, do you know many Christians? Listen now, listen. Many Christians can't come to church because uh, I'm not feeling fine. I have feeling one kind, so I cannot come to church. But but even if they are feeling one kind, they can still go to hospital. It shows the value you have for things of God. You are not feeling fine. What we, what we, how many of you, how many of you, we, we, when we come to church here, come here and say, uh, Pastor, they say, we say, we're sorry, Pastor is feeling a little bit uh, malaria, some kind of malaria, so we cannot come and preach today. How many of you like that kind of pastor? You like that kind of pastor? Huh? You like that kind of pastor? We say, you be like, say, uh, malaria, they who come here? Go for me. You know what? <laughs> ah, you are you are at baby who stage, baby who stage. You don't know what it means for us to be here. Me and my to be regularly here, regularly, regularly. I was I was listening to Ken. I was saying, can I come and watch here? One of one of the virginals. He said one time he was sick. He was sick. He was on the pulpit. He was shaking like this on the pulpit. On the pulpit. I know you already prayed. He was shaking, 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 shaking like this. While he was preaching, he said, excuse me, wait a minute. I went to, went to the back. Satan, get out, get out, get out, get out. My son, he, get out, get out. He goes, get out. I, went, I went, took his Bible. I was still shaking. Yes, I will teach your healing. Why teach teaching your healing? The power of God shot through his system. Got him healed. He said, you, he said, you live by faith. You live by faith. It's only faith that can never fail. Doctors will fail you. Your brother, or your uncle, who promised to give you money to set to, to you and start business, will fail you. Many people depend on their uncle. Uh, some, some people, they will, they will, they will test me. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, I, I've been watching your television. Uh, I have uh, my, my, my uncle promised me uh, it will give me money. He didn't give me money. I, I said, look, Mr. Man, please, you want prayers or what? <laughs> what are they looking for? They're looking for money. They want to give them money. It's actually insane for you to think that somebody who is feeding you the word of God will be able to feed you. Then people, the men, you know in Nigeria, yes, I told you that in Nigeria, yes, there are many people who are, they are small, they are small, they are crazy small. They know well, but they never, they never, they never have clothes yet. I didn't know that one. <laughs> there are many people in Nigeria who are not well, they never have the clothes. If you look at them, they are not well. Because if somebody is well, how can you be living like that? You know, in, in Nigeria, you know, nobody cares. Or they say, no, everybody. Uh, many people are not. It's not as if I see. Well, me and my wife were talking to somebody. Somebody was giving birth. I don't know how many children the person was giving birth to now. This person is in poverty. I mean, poverty is written all over. You see, P O P E. You see everything. Like this. <laughs> One picking, two picking, three picking. He's going to four picking. And no money to eat. Oh, and they look and say, look at this person. You carry that one, 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 yeah, carry that one. They need to take them to an asylum and lay us on them first. And say, this person is nowhere. They, no, no, most people, that's true, it's true. Because you are giving back to children. Where is the money? The one you have, you have, you are struggling with that one. You say you want to bomb more. 
Come back, Christmas. Come back, come back. Oh, Christmas, what about Get away. In Jesus' name, you are here, you are here, you are here. You know, you know some people, if it's a sickness of the, of the body now, you know that it's pain here. But this brain, you know the pain here, pain now. You know, you know some people, if it's a sickness of the, of the body now, you know that it's pain here. But this brain, you know the pain here, pain now. You know that it's pain now. I want to burn with me, I go burn, I go burn, I go burn. There, there, was, this, there was this, my, uh, my, what about relations? <laughs> me and my wife can't say that, see? Oh, madam, no burn now. I go burn. I go burn. <laughs> I won't burn. Then he born now. Right now, the whole family is in trouble. What does he CC. He doesn't have his CC. He has burned them for ground. I don't burn them. People use pregnancy as anko. You get belay. You get belay. You get belay. Get belay. Hey! You are not aware. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> it's a gathering of faithfuls with strength like an eagle. Join Pastor and Mrs. Lotto at the Eagle Christian Center for Sunday worship service by 9 a.m., Tuesday Bible study and leadership meeting by 6 p.m., and Friday's prayer and healing service also by 6 p.m. Venue, Suite A14, Ground Floor, Roaches Plaza by Tantalizers, Wusei Zone 3, Abuja. For further details, call 0803-965-8883 or email Center at yahoo.com. Come. Make it a date with the Lord and experience an atmosphere of God's presence at the Eagle Christian Center. God bless you.